God, right now I have a topic about worship. And I just did a video about worship and I'd like to give an example in the scripture of true worship and how you have to know what you worship. You have to know who you worship, why you worship. A lot of people, they just worship themselves and they have created a God that desires this because their worship is really toward fallen angels. And the fallen angels are those that are created beings who desire worship. So it is, of course, in line with their will that you worship yourself and them because you're in agreement with them. They want worship, okay? And people that worship themselves, they obviously go for that desire, okay? And it's altogether a waste of life when you think about it that you're going to be created by God and then you don't even worship your creator. What's the point? Okay. And that's why it's written, the heart of the wicked is little worth. Okay. In Exodus 4 verse 31... It reads, And the people believed. When they had heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Okay. So, here we see that the people they worshipped, they were in hard bondage in Egypt. Okay. And... The people believed that God was their deliverer and they worship God. Bless God. So if we look at this in figures, have you been delivered from sin? Okay. Well, then you ought to worship God. Okay. Okay. And of a truth, there's a lot that's going to come with this. You know, you're not going to worship God without the spirit and the truth involved. And when you talk about spirit and truth, it goes deep, okay? Okay. When you look at the plagues that came on Egypt, Egypt was the enemy of Israel. It's written that I've called my son out of Egypt. And the enemies of the Lord shall perish. Okay. And... The question is, are you going to be able to hold your worship through Christian life? Okay. If I go to Exodus 12. So in between these chapters, God with a mighty and strong hand, the people came out. Okay. And then we get to the Passover. And the Passover was a terrible day for Egypt, okay? And the question is, are you still going to worship God when these things happen to your enemies, okay? Because, for example, I'll get to the verse... But right after the verse I read in Exodus 5, and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh 
Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. So, that's one thing when it comes to your enemies, that, you know, Moses went to them, and they tried to do it the easy way, okay? And it didn't work the easy way, okay? It was Pharaoh's fault, and there's a whole other topic with the hardening of Pharaoh. And you try for your enemies, right? You try to tell them to stop. Stop sinning, okay? In some cases, you try to talk them out of acting a fool toward you, like Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a fool, you know? He was a man of absurdity, you know? And you try. You try to tell them, just let us serve God. You know, you need to stop doing what you're doing. Let us go. Stop sinning. Because we have to look at it, too, from the spiritual. You know, when you sin, you despise your neighbor. Okay? And you need to stop. Stop doing that, you know? But see, most of the time it doesn't work. And it's not because of anything you're doing wrong. You know, you're just sent out by the Lord, okay? And Jesus, you know, he's going to make short work, you know, when he returns. And, you know, you're going to worship God. Here it says in verse 27 of Exodus 12, that you shall say is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over to the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. That's a true worship of God. That you bow to God just when you believe? No. But through the whole life. Okay? That you believe and you're delivered from sin and from Satan and you worship God but you also worship God when sinners and Satan get destroyed and that's the true worship of God okay because you bow down to God that what God wills will happen and this is God's will God's will is sinners are going to be destroyed. Okay? Now, there's going to be people that fight you on this, and there's going to be some they are going to fight from the inside. And then we see in other figures about backsliding, as the people, they were promised these things, and they didn't go into the land. And there's going to be some that leave. They're going to leave the race. And the reason why is because they cannot worship God in their state. You cannot worship God being a people pleaser. You seek to please men, not God. Okay? And in doing so, you end up persuading God, not man. No, we're called to persuade men, like Pharaoh. Okay, we're trying to persuade people to stop. Don't persuade God. God's already said what he's going to do. Okay, and in prophecy, it's already been told to you what's going to be the outcome. Okay, but what you end up happening to do is what you end up doing is you try to please men. And you know what? It's not the heart of the Messiah. It's not Jesus in you. Jesus in you said what he said. It's in Psalm 31. If you don't believe it, you're not saved. I just gave you a chapter in the Bible. If you don't believe it, you're not Christian. Okay? You have to believe these things. Will you believe? You know, I believe, therefore I've spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. And Jesus Christ is going to destroy sinners. And he's going to torment sinners in hell. And they're going to fight you on this. Okay, and they're going to say, well, you know, you were this, you were that. I was those things, but I've been delivered, I believe. I worship God. And for whatever it's worth, God uses me. 
to try to help you today, whatever it's worth to you. And you don't need me, you know. I can give you a Bible. You don't need me, okay. But for whatever it's worth to you, I want to be worthy of the calling of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you these things. And I'm going to try to persuade you to stop sinning. And then you need to fear God. You know, this is one of the last known preaches of the gospel we read of in the scripture before Jesus returns in Revelation 14. And it says, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him. This is the preaching of the gospel as we read in this chapter in Revelation 14. And then what comes after that? More message. I'm being tormented day and night. What God do you worship? There is God's many, Lord's many. Do you worship the God of Israel? Because if you worship the God of Israel, you have to worship God when he is doing what he wants to do, not when he's just doing what you want him to do. Okay? A lot of people cannot worship a God that is going to destroy every sinner. They can't worship this God because they love sinners more than him. Okay, that's why they worship different people and stuff. You know, that's why they have idols. You know, that's the thing about idols. Idols is complete silliness. I mean, you're going to take something from the creation like wood or stone and you're going to fashion an image and you're going to pay homage to these things and sometimes say it aligns with the God of the Bible. And here's the creator. He makes wood. He makes trees, you know, and this is what you have to do, you know. And this is why it's so silly. But also think about it. It's also silly because instead of just worshiping God, you have to come up with something else. And this is why it's said about people, you know, whether it's smoking cigarettes or getting drunk, you're just not satisfied with how God made you, you know. You're just not satisfied with God. So that's why you go after other things. And when you go after other things, you reap what you sow. Okay. And you're stubborn and rebellious. Some of you are backsliders, you know, and the backsliders, you know what I'm saying. You know exactly what I'm saying. You know, a true backslider is someone that had real peace. The children of Israel, they ended up to be true backsliders. A lot of people today probably are not even, you know, capable of backsliding because they've never been. Okay. But the children of Israel, they knew. They knew exactly what they came from. They knew exactly what they saw. They knew exactly what happened at the Red Sea. They knew. And for one reason or another, they just didn't want to worship God anymore. You know, they didn't care about the truth anymore. They weren't in the spirit anymore. They're in the flesh. You know, they're complainers. You know, you got to endure hardness. Some people, they're going to have to endure you know, different levels of hardness, but you're going to have to endure to the end and you shall be hated of all men for the name of Jesus. And, but at the same time, you have to live in peace with all men. And that's a sharp sword there. But God gives wisdom and you got to worship God, you know. And anyway, these are some things I wanted to touch on and the other video should come out maybe around the same time. So it's about worshiping God. Worshiping God is first. And this is one thing the Lord has taught me that worshiping God is first. And, you know, that's what that looks like anyway when you bow down to God in salvation. And But it doesn't stop there, you know. And the worship has to be true. And it has to be in the spirit. And you have to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I mean, you got to really want the kingdom. You know, you have to want Jesus to have Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have to have and share in his desires, you know. And you have to believe God. You have to put your faith in Jesus, who is a faithful creator. You got to stand the gap, okay. Bless God.